Okay, let's talk about air resistance in projectile motion. As you know, we have been talking about an ideal situation for projectile motion where there's no air resistance. So what if there's air resistance? Okay, so in IB, uh, we only expect you to know more qualitatively. And so from here, let me uh, give you some example. So I have got a, two, a graph combined of two motion here, uh, which apparently is from the test book also. Um, I want you to identify which one is the one that is with air resistance. The other one, of course, with uh, the absence of air resistance instead. So think about it and label it. Okay, so apparently this is a one uh, without air resistance, while the one uh, red in color is a one that is with air resistance. Okay, so... Um, I mean it is actually quite obvious and also we can also try it with our simulation as well so uh, here I just basically uh, set it up like with some you know random parameters now it's without air resistance so let me launch it okay and now I would switch on the air resistance notice that I don't change any setting here and okay this is not very great because um, maybe the air resistance is not strong enough so what I will want to do is maybe I can change the diameter into much bigger well maybe I'll I can redo it again because um, just to show you that it is the same so certain angle say 50 although uh, the diameter should not affect the result at the end when there's no air resistance because uh, only affect when you have air resistant apparently with greater diameter than greater air resistant okay so this is basically how it looks like uh, in this graph as well you can see uh, the shape itself is different apparently so right now I would like to give you some time to identify three main differences between these two paths Okay, so uh, three differences. The first one is, I would say, the range. Okay, referring to the one with air resistance, range is shorter. Okay, or you may say the maximum height is also shorter as well. Okay, so both of these are referring to the uh, range, like the displacement itself. And I'll, I'll count it as the same kind because both are quite similar. The main idea of like why with air resistant would affect its range and also vertically its maximum height is think about when the object is right here with air resistant, it has a velocity going horizontally and also vertically. And since air resistant is opposing your motion and therefore you should have a force that is point backward and also downward as well so in that case that would affect of course at the end uh, the total range horizontally and also the total height vertically second thing that you should find is um, it may be a little bit hard to realize but um, the shape of the whole curve for the red one without with air resistance comparing to the blue one without air resistance blue one was symmetrical well, for the red one is not symmetrical or there is another word called asymmetric okay the last difference that you may have is uh, when the particle is coming back down right here you can find the angle that it is having is uh, steeper so at this point it is 
steeper. Okay, so these are the main three differences you may realize uh, with or without a resistance. Number three is to ask you sketch a velocity time graph and acceleration time graph for the one with a resistance. So maybe I can draw you the one with doubt a resistance first and then you can try to do the other one. In fact, this is one of the exercise that we did earlier and um, I'm pretty sure that you should still remember it. So for Vx and Vy, let's do it separately. For Vx, again, uh, this is without air resistance, so I would use a blue color to represent. And you know, horizontally, there's no change in velocity, so let's simply just the constant level. For Y, uh, let's say it is positive upward. I mean, upward as positive, so we will have a certain positive value at the beginning, uh, referring to the fact that it's going up and then it will hit zero when it go to the highest point and then uh, go to negative later on okay so this is uh, how it should look like without air resistance so now I would like you to pause the video try it out and let's check the answer together afterwards Okay, let's check the answer. And before we try to work out the answer, uh, I want to remind you that once again, this is a VT graph and the slope of a VT graph actually represents acceleration. And acceleration has a close relationship with the net force. So with greater net force, then the acceleration would be greater or the other way around. So for horizontal, uh, think about when the object is projected like in the projectile motion horizontally there's only one force and that is air resistance and if you recall air resistance there are actually two factors one is the speed or the, you can call it velocity itself the second is simply the, the surface area which in our case it is uh, simply remain constant so think about velocity at the beginning is high and therefore air resistance is high so you should have a great reduction of uh, a decrease of velocity at the beginning. So how I would say should be more like this. And eventually it's more or less uh, hitting like level off and this is like terminal velocity. If you like, you can make it uh, to terminal velocity earlier like this. That's also fine as well. But I think for showing the case I think more like general so at the beginning you can see the slope is a bit steeper because there's uh, a greater velocity and then later on become more gentle and later on at the end it will be zero because velocity horizontal is simply zero okay so for vertical is a bit more complicated uh, think about this when the object is going up okay you have weight and you should also have air resistance so in that case the air resistance will also drag you down at the highest point you only have weight because velocity is zero when the velocity is going down i mean the ball is going down then weight is still pointing down but then the air resistance will be pointing upward and that will affect the slope of your graph and so in that case um we would be able to draw a steeper slope at the beginning when the ball is going upwards so i would say more like this and then until it hits zero so once again if you think about this part is actually quite similar to the uh, horizontal but then since with the presence of weight you will go down even faster so probably something like this I would say uh, more gentle okay like this and then you should still have actually you should still have the weight so you should still maintain this the slope okay kind of I hope this will be more like parallel and then uh, when you are going down then it will not be as 
deep as the original one so it will be more like this probably okay and uh, notice that I actually hit the zero earlier than the one without air resistance that is again because you will reach the highest point when you have but reach your highest point earlier when you have air resistance present okay so this is um, what I would do and um, one thing you may want to notice is uh, roughly since the whole projectile motion is going from the same level ending at the same, same level then I suppose the vertical displacement which is the area covered by the curve should be more or less the same mm, I hope this is same or a little bit off earlier so I hope I can erase yeah this part okay so hopefully this will be a more um, realistic in the situation imagination okay so by now you should have already finished uh, the projectile motion in IB curriculum as well and I would like you to try uh, all these exercise questions that are assigned to you so you should be able to do all of them until the next subchapter 2.2 the next video uh, it will be simply a video that I will explain all the questions so make sure you finish it first before you check out the next video